welcome. Come on in for the art tour. Cheers. called Imagine. It's six panels of oil and cold wax on um, wood and it's about the history of where I've been, specifically places I've lived. It's inspired by Pat Conroy and if you're in the South it's required reading. People said to me, oh read Pat Conroy, read Pat Conroy. You know the guy from Prince of Tides and the Great Santini. And that just did not appeal to me. Um, but like Pat Conroy, I'm trying to dissect the stories of my life. It's part of my mission as an artist, and it comes out this way in storytelling versus the written word. To me, this is very symbolic of each place I've been, city and country, aerial landscape, abstracted versions of it places that were calmer and places that were busier, places that were more tightly occupied. This book, painting here is called, I See You in My Garden. The other big story in my life as an artist is my connection to my mother who was a very avid gardener and my first art teacher. This talks about seeing her in my garden. When I'm deep in the earth, dirty hands and plants about me, I think about her. And I believe you can never move past some of those early relationships and those early memories. They come back and find you even when you least expect them. I didn't intend to have this face come out here, but it, it, it does show up. There are other faces and figures in here. So spiritually, that's what that painting is about. But artistically, it's really about all of these spaces in between. Instead of a painting of flowers or plants, or a traditional representational garden. It's more about the colors and the structure of, of what Mother Nature has created and these lovely little spaces in between all of the plant life. This is another piece inspired by Pat Conroy. I love the way he's able to find forgiveness, find the bright point in a story, and how he lulls you in to this lovely southern landscape and hospitality and connection to the low country, and then he punches you right in the heart. He, he pulls on something not to be maudlin or to be smarmy, but to get you to really think about things. And as I'm painting, I'm constantly thinking about the stories of my life and the reverence I have for the places that I've been. And maybe the more that we illustrate those beautiful parts, we can reconcile with some of the less pretty parts we can tackle some of the bigger issues in our lives and the, our society. Would you like to see how this really happens? You wanna head up to the studio? Welcome to the studio. Here it's fueled by coffee, a little bit of classical music, and a lot of hot mess. Not to trip over the dog. And this might seem overwhelming to some people as studios go, but for me, I thrive in that absent-minded professor 
stimulus and constant stuff everywhere. And a lot of these paintings that you see are works in progress or things that I'm studying, trying to figure out what to do next. I typically have 10 or 15 paintings going at once. I have fast paintings and I have slow paintings. Some paintings start out and get finished within a couple of days and others linger for months as I chip away at them. Uh, the act of painting time on them might be less, but the thinking time really is a long time. I have my thinking seat over here and purposely picked a white sofa so that I wouldn't put as much crap on it. I'm not saying it's always cleaned off, but the paintings I'm thinking about right now is the collection sitting there and I'll move them around and sit there and stare at them. There's a few little display places for empty thing, or finished things and a few empty spaces left to make some new places, but here's where I paint. On the wall, with, there's some screws back here, the canvas sits here, and I can walk back and forth and collect my paint, whether I'm working with acrylic or oil, and stand back and look and decide what I need and add to the painting. And sometimes I sit at the table, depending on what stage I'm at in the painting. This wall can accommodate some of the bigger pieces. And sometimes I actually stand at an easel with a palette in my hand, like the stereotypical artist. But for me, this is very conducive. It's definitely my happy place. And it's very conducive to thought and process. And I never know what's going to happen when I come up here. So what are you working on here? So these are three pieces that are possibly intended to be a triptych, three pieces that could go together, or maybe they'll just live out in the world separately. They might be evocative of bridges and sunsets and low country kind of a theme, but I don't know exactly where it's going. I'm a very process-oriented painter. I didn't start out to, to make a painting about where these urban places meet the natural places. But that is a, an important theme to me, this idea of encroaching on Mother Nature and what we owe her and what we, where we should tread lightly. So that's a common theme in, in my work. But I didn't say today I'm gonna paint about this. That's just who I am, so that's what I do. How it happens is a totally different story. Would you like to see how that happens? Yes. Okay. So I'll move these around so you can see why I have stuff everywhere. And the first step is to activate the canvas. It's my favorite part because it's play. There's very little thinking no editing. I just get a bunch of stuff. And I don't even look sometimes. I just reach in here. These are my grown-up crayons. These are the Crayon d'Arche wax crayons. So when I'm going to use some acrylic paint, I'm going to get a wax resist so that those lines and colors and scribbles will show through. And the first thing that I ever learned in art is that if you scribble and you keep making an oval, and you make a circle, you add a few triangles. There you go, you got a cat. You know, so if you want to make a cat, you be the cat and you, you know, just keep that mark moving. This mark making, we're always so afraid to, we have to have it perfect and each line has to mean something, but no, these are just, and it's interesting, we all have our own mark and my mark tends to be this because my maiden name begins with the letter Q. And I find it when I'm doodling or idly making marks, that's what I do. It's the oldest mark I knew, that and this cat here. Uh, I don't think a lot about the colors or what I'm doing. I just want to color like you did with the kid, when you were a kid with your whole arm and you didn't think you just that funness of coloring in that whatever happens to be in your hands. And I don't even think that, oh gosh, I got that orange, orangey yellow and that 
purple in there. It's going to make mud at some point. I don't even care. Just grab some crayons. I love Easter Wen Ink Tense Pencils. It's ink in a pencil. How cool is that for making marks? And again, I'm not thinking, and I've got classical music on in the background, so sometimes I listen to the music and do what the music's doing that hokey art teacher stuff but it's so true and it really speaks to the soul uh, this is that ink tense in in a whole pastel -y form and Color pencils, and I'm going to look at them to see what color. I've got to work with those colors. Oh, that's not a color I would have picked, but we'll see what happens. And none of this really matters. This is just like a singer who trills or goes through the scales or an athlete who runs through the tires. It's just getting your instrument tuned up. It's getting your kinesthetic memory to come back about what you need to do. And just thinking about things. And sometimes I think about the classic stuff I've learned. I'm going to grab a big piece of charcoal over here. A little rainbow of colors in here. So, you know, Fibonacci says there's certain space and there's certain areas we focus on. So maybe I think about those classic things. I know all of that elements and principles of art and all the things, but sometimes that over teaching can get in the way, which is a teacher saying that, but I, it's true. And you just gotta let it, let it flow and let it happen, which sounds really woo woo and artsy fartsy, but that's true too. You really just need to enjoy the process. For me, that really works, that intuitive part. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know what this is gonna be, but right now it's just enjoying that coloring, scribbling, making patterns and textures. And now I'll start with some paint. And I don't know, this big brush is calling me. That looks kind of a really big brush for a small canvas, but um, because most of what I've used is water soluble, And this is really fun, this moving uh, and activating again this canvas of these colors. And again, because it's not about the lines, but I do like that line in there and that shape in there. So, ooh, look at that turquoise coming through. My most favorite movie in the whole world is The Karate Kid. Well, not the whole movie, just that part where Ralph Macchio gets mad with the teacher because all you're making me do is wax on, wax off. But then when he throws a punch at him, of course, everything he's ever learned comes back with him and he knows what to do and where to move his hands and things like that. So I know what this big brush is gonna do. I know what certain colors are gonna do. I know what certain tools are gonna do and I know what's in my drop down menu and it, 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 it'll reappear when I need it. So I know that now this is a hot mess and I can change it a little bit. So um, I can take some gesso and another weird flat brush. You don't need really expensive, fancy, fancy brushes. And I'm gonna calm some of this down now. And you can't get too attached to any of this stuff because, you know, I know if I really love it, I can recreate it again. And again, I'm still not thinking too much. I'm just playing.
thinking about shapes and patterns and thinking about that negative space. And And I, I do have a palette and I do have paint and I'm, because I love nature and gardens and this is a complementary color scheme of a red violet and a yellow green. So I'm gonna start with those and I'll mix a lot of black and white and gray into it too. And then who knows what the heck I'll have to do with it too. So again, I'll start with a big brush and just try not to trip over the dog again, just right there. <laughs> but, so I've got this ready violet -y color. And I don't, I don't know, I, I still don't know at this point what I'm painting, what this is gonna be about, but I see a shape in there. And I see a, another similar shape in there. And I'm just getting some color on there. And maybe I'll go over this in oil paint later. Maybe I'll go over the oil and the coal wax later. But again, but you can hear the music's getting more intense too. So, you know, I'm gonna work a little more intensely sometimes and I'm gonna maybe work a little bolder. And later, when I'm getting into some of the finer parts, I might put a book on tape or a podcast. But. And I am a little sloppy and unconventional. My favorite teaching adage is learn all the rules and then break them. Don't worry about the floor or the wall. That's probably not a good adage, but. <laughs> See, then you get these little magical things that are happening and you, you can't always play on that. And so over here, like I didn't intend to make a sunset painting, but I love that yellow and that, that Indian yellow, just that color came through and then it was too much. So I toned it down with some of the color on top of it. And then I, I liked it. So I brought it somewhere else and that's too squiggly for me. So I'll just wipe it off. That's kind of fun, what's happening there. Whether it'll stay or not, I don't know. Yeah, all right, so I don't love that. That's my version of what's off. Maybe it would be better if it was lighter. Yeah, I like that much better. This would be better if it was, this idea of growing things, radiating, and now that's the space I like there, right in there. That's kind of cool. So, get a little smaller brush.
So there's a little routine, but it's not a formula. It's not a, it's not a, every time I do the same thing, every time I get the same result, there's always something different. So this is the fast part of the painting. And then I could work in this tiny little space for four days. And I don't know what it's about yet. I don't know what it is yet. I don't know where it's going to go yet, but something's happening and I'm having a blast. And when I'm not totally narrating, I'll go into a quiet space and I'll start thinking about something, either some garden theme or certain colors make me think of something. I'll start thinking about just that muscle memory of will remind me of a, of a lesson or here we're getting these grayer things in here and I had a college professor that talked about gradations all the time and she rolled her R when she said it, gradations. And I can't ever see that value scale without thinking gradations. So then I'll start thinking about her and I'll be thinking about my time in Boston and I'll be thinking about how we were so excited about walking down the streets of Boston and seeing the wrought iron fences creating negative and positive space in the snow. And that's just where my mind goes. It's really a lovely kind of thing because I don't set out to say, let's remember that. It's like a little visit from an old friend. And uh, that's pretty priceless. because it's getting closer to fall and I can feel the approaching fall, those golden tones are, are speaking me too. I love that golden tone with this deeper purple, red violety purple. And it always amuses me that now the music's getting quieter and softer and slower and I paint that way too. It feels like magic, but it isn't a magic trick. And when I let go of that and, and really remember that I am a highly trained professional and have lots of skills, even if I make a hot mess, I know I can bring it back. I know I can go through that audit of this needs some space, it needs some shape, it needs some line, it needs some texture. I, I know how to fix it. I know how to do it so I don't have to worry or, or be concerned about how everything goes together. I can just play with it and have fun and then see what happens next. If I don't like it, I'll wipe it off, I'll paint over it, I'll redo it, or I'll make a whole other painting. All those little curvy lines need to have some straighter lines. I love that color. That's just that lovely permanent violet mixed with some white. And it's only it's only gesso too. It's just chalky gesso. So sorry, Sarah Gerard, I'm gonna cover up your gradations here. Gradations.
and again, like the mark making, there's always these things that start happening. These shapes and these, like this little row of little, little boxy things. Again, that's that space between as the plants are growing, it's not as excited about the plant as those little pockets in between. And if you were only this big in the garden looking through the plants, we, we think we're so big and we trot across the grass, but what if we were in the grass? What if that was our home? And I like to imagine that kind of space and place and maybe that creates a little more reverence for all the magical, mystical parts that are out there in Mother Nature. And I'll start thinking about that. And maybe, maybe now I'm starting to see the inside of a flower. Maybe we're a little bee right in here and this is the heart of the flower. Maybe this is that pollen bearing stamen and these are the emerging leaves. Yeah, I was kind of seeing that. I like that idea of the right deep in the heart of that big tulip or poppy or something that has a very cup-like flower, maybe the hibiscus or something. I don't know. Yeah, so I'll let that dry for a while and then I'll take it to the table and see if I can't pull that flower out. That's where that's going. So then I'll put this one aside and get something else and start all that all over again. That's why I have all of these paintings here. 